This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. No, I want more of that. Hi. Hi. Eh, arigatou gozaimasu. <laughs> We're putting the test track to shame. <laughs> oh, no, did Principal help? If Principal helped with this kidnapping thing, then I lose a lot of respect for her. Oh, no, no, he's talking to a professor in, uh, probably America. Yeah, Principal, the principal of the school. She, she, she's too old for Yuji, but she seems fairly normal. Oh, yes. Wow. That, did you see how fast he snapped from friendly father figure to grumpy old man? Like, it was like, like that. Oh, no, not chief secretary. Oh, no, not gritting the teeth. Wow! He just shipping her off to America! Okay, so they're not going to Tokyo. Okay, in that case, this actually does make a little bit more sense. They drive the car to the helicopter. The helicopter is safer, safer and faster. Helicopter can't cross the sea to America, so that they need the private jet. Okay, that actually does make sense. Still does not make sense that Yuji could pedal that fast on a bike. Also, very convenient that it's like, oh no, they made it to the helicopter. Oh wait, I got the fastest car in the world right here, and the guy's willing to let me drive it there. Wow! <laughs> wow. Alright, tool. Yumiko-sama-o-tsure-suru-toki-mo-sugata-wa-issai-mie-masen-de-shita. You do realize that if they're smart, the guys who abducted Yumiko probably have guns. I just want to point that out. And Yuji has, um, like, a pack of toilet paper. And that's it. Bruh. You suck. Uh-huh. Sure. Not for your sake or anything. Oh, yes, cool. We're back to the good part. The scenery flies past at an astonishing speed. There's a bit more traffic now, but the oncoming cars flinch in terror the instant they see us approaching. They pull over to the shoulder at one by one as we roar, for roar forward down the road. Yeah, 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 you gotta do that. Still can't catch him. Most of my concentration is focused on manipulating the steering wheel, but every few seconds I glance over at the helicopter from the corner of my eye. It hasn't really picked up speed, but the terms of this race simply weren't fair to begin with. They're flying a direct course through the sky with no obstacles or signs to worry about. Completely different from chugging along a public road, no matter how nice your car might be. <laughs> when you say, are they going to get in trouble, are you talking about Yuji and Blonde Man? If so, the answer is unquestionably yes. If you're talking about the guys who kidnapped Yumiko, that's a bit of a 50-50, because I think they kind of have ties to organized crime and the police, so... Yeah. Oh yeah, and the detective does hate Yuji, because we didn't let him we didn't let him take our Girl Scout cookies. That definitely happened. My friend's voice by now has lost almost all of its initial vigor, but he seems to be... be he, he keeps up a constant stream of questions about the time. Seems he's really worried about that party of his. You know, he's meeting the love of his life at, at that party, and he needs to bring the turkey. If They can't cut the turkey if the turkey's not there. Okay, one more turn, and it's a straight shot after this. The car drifts into the intersection, his tires squealing as the car swings out to the side. A small sign for the airport flashes past in the fraction of a second before we speed off again. Another three kilometers to go. I've got to beat them there and find a way to intercept their cargo. For now, I simply tear down the road, running parallel to the coast at full speed. The entrance to the airport comes into view, then a small control tower and a number of nondescript cargo aircraft. Among them, there's a single plane that's conspicuously different from the others. It's a smaller craft with stripes in the East Beach Express red and blue on its flank. 
has to be a passenger jet belonging to the company. So does Yumiko at this point know her dad is doing this, or does she still think it's just random superbugs? And just at its side, the helicopter we've been chasing all this time has already landed. <laughs> Shit! Too late again? As the crow flies, it's only 300 meters away. Close enough that I can actually see the small group of people boarding the jet. I grope desperately for some sort of a solution, but even if I ram my way into the airport, there's not much I can do now that they've fully embarked. Frustrating as it is, as it is to admit, I'm out of ideas. The jet begins to taxi for takeoff practically the instant the door shuts behind the last passenger. So much for my wishful thinking about a multi-hour delay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a Thanksgiving party. You can't have Thanksgiving party without a turkey. Sorry, but I don't have the time to chat about your bird right now. Bird? The instant the word leaves my mouth, something occurs to me. Hey. I've got a question. That turkey of yours, it frozen? Hurry! You better not ruin this man's turkey! I see. A wise choice. Hopping out of the driver's seat, I walk over to the passenger side of the car and lightly grab hold of the man's shoulder. You're on the wheel, alright? Just do exactly what I tell you. Bruh, Yuji, Yuji better repay this man big time after this. This time I lean down and bellow into his car, in, into his ear. HURRY UP! <laughs> Yumiko's like, oh no, not turkey. Oh, so she does know now that her father is a massive tool and that he kidnapped her. America? Yes. <laughs> The car smashes through the Finn's fence separating the airport from the public road with a satisfying crunch. How many laws is this blonde-haired man breaking? Because Just because we asked him to. He's the real bro in this playthrough. Aiming for the runway where the jet's already in position for takeoff, we charge forward at maximum speed. Blonde Man is the most sympathetic character in the game. He, d he does not deserve this. Alright, line her up right beside that jet. After that, just hold steady and keep the accelerator to the floor. Dude, this is so cool! This is low-key one of the best parts of the game that I've played. This is awesome. While shouting instructions to my good friend, I retrieve a large flashy box from the back seat. You better buy this man, like, five more turkeys. A passenger jet takes off at around 285 kilometers per hour. We should just barely be able to catch up in this thing. We can make it if you keep that pedal all the way down. I'm counting on you. I take out the enormous lump of a bird flesh from its bed of cold, ice, cold gel packs and hold it high up in the air like a championship trophy. Oh no, no, not the man's turkey! Please, not the man's turkey! Ugh, the wind pressure! We're traveling at a speed sufficient to lift an airplane into the sky. The moment I stand up from behind the windshield, the air rushing past my bo shakes my body violently. Somehow holding myself steady, I dig my fingers into the turkey and move my hand slightly forward. What the heck are you doing with this freaking turkey? It's an absurd plan, and I don't have time to a chance to rehearse. I can only hope I get the timing and the angle of release correct. Still, I've got no choice but to try. Because he's anime protagonist, he's going to do it. Hey, can't you get this thing going any faster? Oh no, I hate that this man's losing his turkey. I'm way more invested in this man than I am in, like, any of the girls in the game. Like, I don't know why. He is literally just this innocent bystander who got wrapped up in, with the worst protagonist ever. <laughs> it won't be possible to catch up if the plane hits V1 speed. We've got to make it before then. All right, good. Keep going like this. The car slips out from under the engine and begins to push slightly ahead. Carefully watching the distance, I wait for the right moment. Another five seconds. Four, three, two, 
Now! Throwing both arms up with all of my might, I fling the cold lump into the air and let the wind carry it back. The turkey soars majestically into the sky, and then, instantly captured by the powerful suction of the intake, curves toward the engine. Oh, that's what he's doing! He's destroying the engine with the turkey! I thought he was going to splat it on the windshield and make them be like, Oh, we can't fly with a turkey on the windshield! <laughs> <laughs> Would I play a root centered around the blonde man? Um... How long? If it was like a short route, then heck yes. If it was a short route of him actually going to the party and having to explain his nutso day, then absolutely I would. But if it was like an, a, ten, a ten hour serious route, then probably not. Don't they have backup engines? Blond Man needs a name. He's too good of a character to just be known as Blond Man. I am going to call him Takashi from now on. She's sitting at the very back of the 20-seat cabin, crouching as if to hide herself. Her frightened expression changes to one of stunned astonishment in the moment, the moment our eyes meet. <laughs> Yumiko, you're never going to believe what happened! Because, truly, what happened is actually undeniably unbelievable. Yo. I speak in the same casual tone I always used to greet her with in the classroom. Before Sakaki can continue, I snap open my cell phone and show her the screen. Yeah. She'd probably intended it to be her goodbye. But instead, those words brought me here. Again with the, I'm sorry, huh? Oh my gosh, now I'm running into the problem that there are too many good thumbnails to use for the YouTube VODs. Do I use this one? Do I use the one of Yuji throwing the turkey? Or do I use the one of Yuji going crazy in the car? Or the one of Yuji on his bike? I just don't know. This is the hardest part of Let's Playing Games like this, is finding which thumbnails to use. I told you not to say that anymore, didn't I? Sakaki's bewildered expression crumbles. All of a sudden, she's on the verge of breaking down. But, but I... Oh, that's her. Yuji don't stutter. You vote the car with them driving like crazy? That's probably what I'll be going with. That's that's like the greatest that's the greatest one though. I'm I'm now kinda curious how close to the end of the route we are, because like we just had we, we've already kind of had a lot of the main parts of the route. Like, we've had the long flashback. We've had the inappropriate dialogue with Amine. We've, we've, had, we've had Yuji's absolutely insane plan that somehow works. So, like, all that's really left is to choose the good or the bad ending, I feel like. Either that or maybe this route will be different from some of the others. Little by little, her eyes fill with tears. Her voice quavers as, her, as she wipes away... <laughs> her voice quavers while she wipes them away with her hands. In that case, keep going until you can repay them properly. Nobody wants your apologies, all right? Try gratitude instead. Ask him the real questions. What happened to Takashi? He, he deserves... He, he better he better be rewarded handsomely by Yuji for this. He better, Yuji better be like, Look, I really need you to do a massive favor for my good buddy Takashi who really, really saved my butt and was a super-duper Chad bro. <laughs> That's right. With a nod to Sakaki, I slowly move my hand off the seat and extend it forward. Once, when I was at absolute rock bottom, my master reached out a hand to me. And now, imitating her as best I can, I reach out to Sakaki. Uh, so he definitely deserves all repairs on his card to be paid for. He deserves a new turkey... He deserves us to go with him to the party to apologize and take responsibility for why he is A, late, and B, why he don't have no turkey no mo. Uh, I believe we should also fully pay for him to get any customizations on the car that he wants. 
And also, we invite him to our wedding. <laughs> if if Yuji and Yumiko get married, like, Takashi better be the best man. <laughs> like, that's all that I'm saying. Like, because he literally helped the two of them come together. <laughs> That dude, that's it. He he's he's the best. <laughs> From now on, if I ever talk to people like I'm like, yeah, I played for New Grisea, they're gonna be like, oh man, like who is your favorite character? Takashi. It's like who the heck is that? There's no character named that. Oh yeah, a blonde-haired guy with a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Sakaki observes my outstretched hand uncertainly, with eyes still full of hesitation. She looks up to me. You're right here, Sakaki Yumiko. I can see you just fine. Come with me. For years, she's refused to acknowledge the girl in the mirror as anything but a character in a play. Shrinking back from the world, she lost her place in it entirely. And so, I begin with a simple affirmation of her existence. I'll get you out of here. I'll hold you up until you can walk. And I'll speak to you until you can find your voice. Don't dance on anyone's strings. You can live your life however you want. I came here to show you how. <laughs> Not quite. I want us to search for an answer. Sakaki Yumiko is the daughter of the Sakaki family. Yes! Mo one of the most obvious sentences out there. She's also first and foremost a human being. A again, very obvious. In the course of a life filled with painful events completely beyond her control, she very nearly lost sight of that. But it's an absolute fact. Right now, this girl's lost the ability to live on her own terms. So until she can find her answer, I'll just have to keep her safe. Now that I've made that decision, I'm not going to back down, no matter what comes next. Even if my own country comes after me. Let's go, Yumiko. <laughs> Sakaki reacts strongly to that word. I haven't used her name since the day we reached out of our first wer- <laughs> We reached our first wary truce. Today I'm breaking that seal. It's the clearest way I have to demonstrate how I see her now. Come on, Yumiko. I bring my hand still closer. <laughs> I think she understands. I'm not talking to the daughter of a railroad tycoon, or an antisocial problem child. I'm talking to a fellow human being. And because she understands, her face grows all the more uncertain. A part of her is questioning whether she deserves this. You deserve better than you, G. Yumiko. Instead of saying, it's alright, I call out her name and push my hand forward. The guys aren't going to be unconscious forever, unless we killed them. Sakaki's breath catches in her throat. She moves her mouth slightly without producing a sound, as if to practice. And then, somewhat hesitantly, she speaks. Yes. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Yumiko nods and takes my hand. At first, it's a gentle, hesitant touch, but soon her grip grows firm. I clasp her hand tightly in return and draw her up out of the seat. There will be others coming soon. We need to hurry. I was about to say, let's take the jet! But we, we destroyed the jet. Yuji, how many dollars worth of damages did you cause with a single frozen turkey? A lot! Leading her by the hand, I exit the plane by the escape chute. Like, if you were to challenge me to cause the maximum amount of, of financial damage with a single turkey, this might be, like, the biggest way of doing it, is to toss it in the engine of an expensive private jet and destroy it. <laughs> At a quick glance around, we suggest that no one's pursuing us yet. Still, I leave it a run, pulling Yumiko along beside me. It's the first time I've ever really held the girl's hand. It feels slender in mine, surprisingly small. From now on, I'll have to lead Yumiko safely forward, shielding her from danger. Oh, Yumiko, I gotta introduce you to my new friend Takashi. He can drive us to a party! They'll never find us there. It's a serious responsibility. I knew that from the start. But right now, it feels terribly... real. Having someone to protect really weighs you down, Asako. Who was that? Was it like this for my master when she pulled me along all those years ago? Oh, oh, I think that's her, his master. Right now, Yumiko's small hand feels unbelievably heavy. Can a piece of trash like me really carry this kind of weight? Well, at least you acknowledge the trash, should be truth. <laughs> I can feel doubt oozing out of me like sweat. That's no good. It'll only make Yumiko uneasy if I start brooding. Shaking my head a little, I resettle my hand around hers. A tight grip so that it can't slip away. Beyond the quickly parting clouds, I can see the sky gradually turning to red. Night will be here before long. A field of white stretches out endlessly before me. 
It's such a pure and brilliant light that it seems like my fingers will melt away if I reach out to touch it. But that's not really an option in the first place. My body feels like it's buried under layers of mud. Even the slightest movement is frustratingly difficult. It takes all my effort just to lift my hand a fraction of an inch. Who's there? I can hear a voice at my ear. No. Maybe it's coming from inside my ear itself? I can't even tell. It's a woman's voice. Not particularly gentle, but very familiar. Is she speaking a name? Telling me something? I want to know, but the words fade in and out of audibility, slippery and evasive. My hand finally moves. I grope around above my chest, trying to grab a hold of the voice. Speak. More clearly. I want to hear what this voice is trying to tell me. I want to know where this strange nostalgia is coming from. But soon enough, I find my hand mired in the mud once more. Maybe it was wrong of me to try in the first place. Maybe I don't deserve to hear those words. Oi, ninja! <laughs> That's what he was saying. <laughs> Please, I need to hear the words. Hey, kid! <laughs> hmm? Guys, I haven't had to loudly sip my water at all this stream. This is amazing. A shout from overhead breaks forcibly into the dream. A fi the field of white in front of me gradually takes on shades of blue. I try to move my hand to shield my eyes from a dazzling spot of light, but there's something soft on top of my body that gets in the way. What is this? As I pull the lump of cloth off me and examine it through bleary eyes, the man standing over me takes the cigarette from his mouth and answers in a slightly exasperated tone of voice. <laughs> in actuality, we tried riding Sachi's bike. Obviously, we couldn't catch the car, so we collapsed. We dreamed that whole thing happened, and then this random guy's just like, Ah, here's a blanket, I guess. I see. It is a bit chilly, I guess. The sun's certainly bright enough, but the air is far from warm. My sleep-fogged mind takes a few seconds to recall the date and my current situation. It's November. Having lost my previous occupation several months ago, I'm lying on the ground outside my new workplace, apparently at the end of a brief nap. Did we just get, like, a massive time skip? Right. My apologies, because now it's actual Thanksgiving, not summer vacation. The worker stubs out his cigarette in an ashtray nearby and smiles wryly down at me. That a fact. I'm not really doing it on purpose. No, nothing like that. But the person who raised me was a little unique. Pumping a hand on my shoulder, the man shakes me back and forth in what's presumably intended to be a friendly gesture. Right. My apologies. Yeah. I grab the helmet lying at my side and head for the site at a jog. Is this a dream sequence? Is this a flashback? Or is this a time skip? I don't know. The sun, already falling lower in the sky, gently warms my back. Oh, what? Where is this? This is a completely new place. What is happening? In television dramas and such, fugitives on the run from something or other often head straight for the sleepiest stretch of a countryside they can they can find. The basic idea is that less people means less opportunities for someone to see you, but... Nine times out of ten, that's a downright terrible strategy. An outsider suddenly showing up in a tiny, close-knit community stands out like the proverbial sore thumb. As anyone who's read a decently plotted mystery novel can tell you, hide a leaf among the leaves and a corpse among the corpses. And when you're looking for a place of high population that offers convenient opportunities for under-the-table employment, the, metro the metropolitan area is the obvious choice. When you're hiding a person, do it among people. That's one lesson I learned not from my master, but through painful personal experience. The day's work finished, we're up right on schedule. I walk the road home at a steady pace. A bag of deep-fried... Oh, I've read that as deep-fried wood. I'm like, you're not supposed to fry wood. Deep-fried food from one of my new co-workers dangling from one hand. This town, about an hour by train from the heart of Tokyo, used to be one of the old-school red-light districts back in the day. Even now that it's been cleaned up, the atmosphere is still a little on the seedy side. Anybody would get lost in their first trip through the warren of narrow streets and tangled alleyways. Not the most convenient town to lead a normal life in, but right now it's exactly what we need. Oh, what we need... Okay, so, this is a time skip, I, I'm guessing. He and Yumiko are on their own now. Nothing seems off today, either. With small movements of my eyes, I observe the appearances and behavior of the people around me. 
Apart from checking for possible surveillance personnel, I'm looking for changes in the neighborhood shops and restaurants. Anything even slightly different from yesterday warrants careful scrutiny. Although it's pure habit by now, it still involves a good deal of mental focus and emotional strain. Honestly, pretty rough when I'm coming home physically exhausted from a long day of manual labor. Well, if you don't have that high school diploma, it's hard to get a, a good job. But hey, some people like the manual labor, so I'm, I'm happy for that. Still, letting down my guard is not an option. We're tucked away pretty discreetly here, but there are definitely people looking for us, and a single coincidence could completely overturn the status quo. Quietly repeating that fact to myself, I take yet another look around. I overlap my mes memorized image from yesterday with the street before my eyes and compare the two carefully. About 15 minutes walking distance from the station, I slip through a pair of alleyways, then enter a small apartment building. There are more straightforward routes home, but I've been deliberately taking a tangled path to make life a little harder for anyone who tries to follow. After a slow, watchful climb up the stairs, I unlock the door marked 203 and enter the room. I'm back. All quiet today as well? When I open the door, I'm immediately greeted by a relieved face. Hey, wow! We living together already! That was fast. Good lord. I don't approve of this unless you guys married real fast. Confirming that Yumiko's present and well, I finally allow myself to relax a little. Who would have thought that we would move in with Murder Girl to feel safe? Like, what is this? Alright, good to hear. Taking off my shoes, I hand over the sack with the fried wood. I mean, fried food. Got another present from Soai-san. Can you get out the plates? Well, as far as they know, I'm living alone. And I don't eat that much at lunch. Guess they're a little worried about my diet. Yeah! They're a little on the rough side, but... Yeah, you aren't wrong. Oh, that's the best part of this route. We don't have to see Amine or Makina again. <laughs> Yay! Also, did Sachi get her bike back, or did we literally just steal Sachi's bike and then drop it off and never return it? Man, man, first Takashi loses his turkey and Sachi loses her bike. Just everybody losing everything. After I leave in my bag on my floor, I head for the kitchen area. I'll warm it up and throw something together. <laughs> So is she just kind of under house arrest, like she's not allowed to leave? <laughs> she has to get a new bike? No! She she ordered it from British Magazine! <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> the cold water falling onto my hands feels like a sign of the changing seasons. Autumn may linger a while longer by the calendar, but soon it'll be winter in all but name. That you, Amine? Yeah, I got Sakaki out of there. Sorry about the hassle. This is a flashback. I'll be getting in touch again at some point, but I had Sakaki throw her cell away. Keep in mind we won't be able to answer calls from your end at the moment. Also, tell Sachi I'm sorry about the bike. I'll compensate her as soon as I get the chance. Alright, hanging up now. Okay, at least you can pay for a new Sachi bike. Yeah, the others made some real contributions to the rescue operation. This isn't the time to be feeling guilty. For the moment, let's just focus on getting ourselves somewhere where they can't track us down. I've made some preparations for a rainy day scenario. We'll stop by there first. Still pulling Yumiko alone, I look over to meet her eyes. Don't worry. It's going to be alright. Trust me. She answered while squeezing my hand powerfully in hers. This relationship's actually kind of cute! <laughs> <laughs> This relationship is less cute. <laughs> he has such a derpy face when he's upset. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. We never expected him to just randomly find a nice guy with the fastest car in the world and a frozen turkey. <laughs> what? How is? How are we supposed to know that it would happen? <laughs> it's very, very true. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's really trying to contend for the most unlikable character in the game. 
Yeah, this this guy's a dick. <laughs> no doubt about that. I'm not sure if he's the number one most unlikable character though. Like you got you got so many choices. There's just no end with some, and there's no end to the unlikable characters. But I gotta say, uh, ooh, uh, who was that person? Oh yeah, Michiru's childhood tutors were pretty awful. They're definitely top contenders. I mean, Yuji is a top contender as well. But, I mean, he at least has some redeeming character. I don't know if this guy really has any redeeming qualities that we've seen. He just seems kind of like a scumbag. What's What's actually going to happen is, as we keep fording his plans, he's eventually going to get so upset that, like, he bursts a bloodstream and, like, a, a, blo a blood vessel and dies. And then it's like, all right, we can go back. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let's not move too fast there, Nick. <laughs> I, I, let, let's not go the, the shotgun wedding route. <laughs> but actually, if they're living together, then who knows? If, if, they're, if they want to commit, then shotgun wedding may be the choice. <laughs> It's weird circumstances right now. <laughs> Why don't you call the police to notify them about the kidnapping? Because then I'd have to explain that I tried to kidnap her! <laughs> See, this is this is this is the thing. If you want to commit a crime and not get caught for it, commit a crime against criminals. Because, like, if you want to steal something, steal something from like, a guy who stole it from someone else. They can't report it as missing because then they'd have to admit they stole it. Not that I thought about this or anything. いいえ。私には分かりかねます。今は会社にとっても私にとっても大切な時期だ。警察沙汰になれば必ずどこかから話は漏れる。メディアは報道完成で抑えられても妙な噂は立つだろう。そんなことになっては困るのだよ。とも
like, they were technically covered up by soap, but it was still uncomfortable. But then we got an adorable scene afterwards of Yumiko, like, dancing in front of the mirror, smiling at the compliment she got. So, it, it was it was two sides of a coin. If I hadn't rescued Yumiko, she would have been shipped off to some school overseas. Our old life would have disappeared, whether I took action or not. I want to know why the guy didn't do the fake kidnapping on the other routes. Nothing we did by not, de not declining the other routes made sense that he would be like, Okay, because you didn't do this, now I'm going to kidnap my daughter. It was Yes, exactly. It went from deeply uncomfortable to actually pretty adorable. Our old life would have disappeared whether I took action or not. But that's not true! <laughs> we played the other routes! <laughs> There's nothing to regret. <laughs> it would be interesting if, like, if you didn't do uh, Yumiko's route, she would eventually just disappear, and you're like, I wonder what happened to her. Oh, she got, you play her route. Oh, she got kidnapped. What the heck? <laughs> it's nothing. Although I'd made some preparations for an emergency beforehand, this escape plan was still extremely reckless and dangerous. I acted boldly, assuming that the Sakaki family circumstances would prevent them from turning this into a manhunt. Still, depending on their approach to the situation, we might have ended up being caught within hours. But I couldn't bring myself to just desert Yumiko, whatever, whatever the risks. I couldn't just let her disappear and leave me with nothing but words of apology, so I wanted to do something for her. Then again, that probably wasn't the only reason. I wanted to protect Yumiko. That was the largest, single largest motive, but there was something else to it as well, something more selfish. The, woman I get the women I get close to always seem to disappear. At some point, I'd grown afraid of that the chain of that loss. Convinced myself it was a curse, a punishment of some sort. The more I started to care about Yumiko, the more I wondered if she'd follow the same pattern. And then they tried to take her away from me. <laughs> Yumiko tries to speak, but her, her voice soft, but hesitates. Also, I can't help but notice that there's only one futon in the visible view. Can't say I approve. Reading the atmosphere, I answer before she can continue. Well, were you about to apologize again, Yumiko? <laughs> Looks like I hit the bullseye. She lowers her eyes for mine awkwardly. Thought I told you to cut it out with that. <laughs> Both of you to assume that Yuji had a life before now. Yumiko. I interrupt her halfway through a sentence with a slightly forcible tone. I decided to protect you. And you decided to come with me. There's nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to apologize for. Look, Yumiko, you're finally your own person now. So for the moment, why not think about yourself? I'd imagine you've got a pretty decent backlog to work through on that front. When did this girl go from being the terrifying psychopathic murderer to the nice, reasonable, cute girl. I don't like how the game actually managed to do that. But again, I don't think it was like, oh yeah, this was a natural progression of like, she repented. It really just feels like the whole murder aspect of her was shoehorned in at the beginning for shock value. And then it just disappeared kind of without a trace, so. This is Artie's hot take. Probably came off as pretty pompous there, but those words were directed at myself as much as her. What's driving me forward right now? It's absolutely true that I want to protect Yumiko and do what's best for her. And underneath those clear feelings, there's a number of hazier emotions I don't quite understand myself. No! No! That's not it at all! I like the new Yumiko! I'm saying I didn't want the box cutter to begin with. Because again, I don't think it really makes much sense in the context of her character. I feel I felt like even in her flashback, her going to the student who was like, spreading gossip about her and slashing her with the box, box cutter. I felt like that was kind of out of place as well. When I took her out of that plane, I told her we'd search for an answer. I thought it was the word Yumiko needed to hear the most after all those years lost in the fog. But I'm starting to think that applies just as much to me. Here, Yumiko. Eat that one, too. I can't allow my uncertainty to make Yumiko uneasy as well. For the moment, I'm going to try and keep the pensive reveries to a minimum. 